Thank you very much for waiting. Now we would like to start the next presentation. The speaker, Mr. Miyoshi, joined Hitachi Solutions in 2003. Since then, he has been involved in the development of the business application using Ruby. He is also a member of Japan OSS Promotion Forum. Besides that, he is an editor of a web magazine called Rubyist Magazine. The other speaker, Mr. Howard, is a member of the application subcommittee of Japan OSS Promotion Forum. He works for Fujitsu and he is involved in the business using OSS. Currently, he is interested in executing Ruby applications on the microcomputer board. Today, they are going to present on MRuby application development in embedded hardwares. Mr. Hala, Mr. Miyoshi, floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. As introduced, I am Miyoshi from Japan OSS Promotion Forum and an employee of Hitachi Solutions. And my partner is Mr. Hala from Fujitsu. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. Thank you. When I get ex excited, something bad happens, so I should not be too much excited. Here's the agenda of my talk. First, we will introduce ourselves briefly. Then, we will talk about the Japan OSS Promotion Forum. And then, I will introduce MLB application and the system and what motivated us. And lastly, uh, followingly, we will talk about the application and the issues we faced and the countermeasures implemented. And lastly, we will share the summary and the challenges. So the main focus is the MLB application development experience, how we started to be get involved. So we will look back step by step what we did and what kind of issues are solved. First of all, self-introduction. As introduced, my name is Hidenori Miyoshi. I work for Hitachi Solutions. I use Ruby mainly for the development of the business applications. Talking about the Japan OSS Promotion Forum, I am a member of application subcommittee. Details will be explained later. And on my private life, I am an editor of a web magazine called Rubyist Magazine. Next edition is now in preparation. But I have been busy for the presentation, so after this, I will work harder for the release. My partner today, Mr. Hara, will introduce himself. Nice to meet you all. My name is Hara. Here it is. As introduced by the Master of Ceremony, I am already introduced, so I just uh, briefly explain. My name is Yoshihiko Hara. Uh, my nickname is at Mark, at Goro Neko, in a network like Twitter. So when you find this name, please remember me. And uh, as uh, my career background and background are already explained. So I want to talk about my hobby my private life. In previous conference, VMware, an engineer talked about the Cloud Foundry, and I am a member of the user group Japan Cloud Foundry. In that organization, I involved in communities of OSS. As introduced, my Boom, or my hobby is Ruby application on microcomputer board. As you may already know, we work for different companies, but we do presentation together. So what connect us? As it comes to OSS, we are working to build ecosystem. So it's okay to partnership with someone from other company. And we met at the Japan OSS Promotion Forum. That is a kind of educational body to promote OSS. 
So this shows the overview or the structure of the forum. So this is the structure, and that is a collaboration among academia, industry, and the government to disseminate OSS in different occasions. Characteristics of this organization is the structure that there are subcommittees and working groups. So they are not just discussing, but they are working and developing on their own. That's the way we are trying to disseminate OSS. And today we are going to present the result of our development. Our activities is in Japan, but there are counterparts in China and Korea. And the Umbrella Forum is called the Northeastern Asia OSS Promotion Forum. And this is a convention held last year. As you can see, there are members from different countries. We, in the application subcommittee in the forum, I'm going to present the result of, of the activities. And this uh, subcommittee has been focusing on the Ruby for the application development. That's the focus of this subcommittee from the beginning. The achievement is presented in conference like this or our own study sessions so that we can share what we have done with others. And here what I have prepared. This is picture in the past. And our manager of the subcommittee, subcommittee chair is here. Do you know who he is? He's not here right now, but he is Mr. Matsumoto, and we felt humble to present in front of him. And this is a kind of promotion of our organization. We issue main magazines, and also we host many different education seminars. And we have the annual meeting, general meeting, to share the result. And this is open to non-members as well. And we have some kind of a gift. If you attend, you can get it. So if you are interested in, please join us next time. So that's the organization and why we are going to present today. Our objective is to share what we have learned with others. That is the main objective for us to attend the conference or present. As mentioned, we have been focusing on Ruby from the beginning, and we have applied Ruby for web applications. And last year, IoT was one of the keywords we focused by for the utilization of Ruby. And our colleague presented right here, right this time in this conference, to talk about the application of Ruby and Ruby to IoT. And we got the feedback for that the presentation, and we thought about what we'd like to do next. And as a result, we decided to focus on MLB application this year and do some study and share the result this year. That motivated us to study utilization of the MLB, and the result is going to be shared with you. So this is the main part of the presentation. and. Would like to hand over to Mr. Miyoshi. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the main part of the presentation. Uh, first is the overview of MLB application and its system, as Harasan mentioned. So besides the businesses, we are the members of one organization from different companies. The important thing for development is something we are interested in. So we decided to take the theme of marathon. I am actually a marathon runner. So we thought about uh, building application for runners. So this is a development of the application for the real-time positioning system for the runners using the GPS and the temperature and the humidity information. And those information are sent to cloud service <coughs> to show the real position of the runner on the web application. Mm. 
minimum operation should be four hours, as we assumed, because many citizen runners, when they run full marathon, their main target is to run within sub four within four hours. And let me talk about myself. I run marathon within four hours on average. I expect you to laugh here, but that's the main target. So that's the reason why we set the target of operation hours of four. So here is a device we built. So it's not a beautiful picture. The black one here is a GPS sensor, and the bar here is a temperature sensor. And here's Raspberry Pi as a hardware and the battery on the right top. And here is the real device. So after the session, please come close and have a look. Or maybe later, after the reception, you can have it and you can see it more closely. Now, here is the data display. After building hardware, we put that in a backpack. It's rather big, so I should put this in a running backpack. Like this, and put them on my back and run. I'm not going to run today, but here is the result of when I run. And this is the data of temperature sensor in a chart. This is at the end of September. The temperature was like 27 degrees Celsius. It was rather hot. And the GPS data is mapped. And the scale is not very good. You will see why. I land near Yokohama, Yokohama City, where I live. So I jogged around here using this device. And uh, the result is here. So this is the result of the data sent from the device. It's over the ocean. So it is no more marathon, but it's now a swimming race. Because of the butt first or the initial positioning, so we tried some adjustment. Even after the adjustment, you see the red one is the result of the data from our device. Blue one is the actual course I ran. You can see the different uh, distance. I ran for three kilometers. However, red line only showed two, two kilometers. So it was unfortunate or so sad result. So apart from the accuracy of the GPS data, we confirmed that this device function at least. So now I would like to talk about the selection of hardware and software. Here is a criteria of the selection. As Harasan mentioned earlier, our objective is to concentrate on the development of MRuby applications. When it comes to embedded device, we use Raspberry, but it's big and it consumes high energy. So we understand it's not an ideal device. However, it's easy to attach sensors without soldering. That's the main reason why we selected this as a hardware. And also, it has a track record of the MRuby application. And also, we decided to utilize the existing infrastructure technology. Here is sensors. GPS temperature sensor. We focus on this area and the cloud service side, data collection, analysis, display. Those areas, there are already existing cloud services and we can utilize them. So the hardware we selected is, as I mentioned, this Raspberry Pi. And those are the sensors we selected. And the uh, OS is Linux-based Raspbian, and uh, MRuby stabilized one 1.2.0. And for the cloud service, we selected Azure from Microsoft. Azure IoT Hub, Storm Analytics, 
Azure App Service, JRuby application was used on them. So we are going to make the MRuby's application. So what we first did was uh, not starting by making the MRuby, but we first started with implementation of CRuby and then transplant them to MRuby. The MRuby and CRuby, some people say that it's only a small difference between the two, and I didn't know how different they are. So we started first uh, implementation with a CRuby, which I'm very much used, and then uh, we picked up what will be the necessary, for example, the HTTPS data transmission and the hammock hash and the base64 encoded, and also the reading of the serial ports. So we did these things. We listed out these things. So with the C reviews, we would be willing to use a gem. But uh, when we think of using them in the MRuby, we decided to avoid using the gem. So we were happy to see that it moved with C Ruby. And then let's move the MRuby application. The C Ruby script that are not using the gem is not simply moving on the M Ruby. That's what we found out. So with this first applications, three lines are shown here. The M Ruby. Let I try to move it with M Ruby. Then with the first line we are struck. It's a very uh, disappointing start. Uh, not many people are laughing. And so the issue that we have found out is that we are not using the gems in the C Ruby does not move directly on the M Ruby. That's what we found out. And also, we cannot get the environmental uh, parameters, bar variables, and also the format of the dates, data, and so on. The, the M Ruby, to make it small and to be realized at M R B. M R B gems to operate that. So we have to try to look at gems M Ruby, which is M R M R B gems. So we look for that, and these are the sources of information. For example, the lower part, the row format for the low light load Ruby forums one two zero. They can see the test uh, results by Windows, Mac, and Linux. So we use them. And for the application, as I mentioned, anyway, we should first try to write it. And we see some problems happening, well, as usual. And we have to try to find out, is that a bug, or is it some problem for the missing MRB gems? So MRB gems, if that's the issue, we will make the survey and we will rebuild the M M gems. And then if it's a bug, I will just uh, go back to write again the application. And by repeating that, we could somehow reach the completed form. So uh, we could make the application. However, there still are many issues coming out. So the problems that we have seen is as one hour passes, the MRuby application suddenly terminates. In the beginning, the marathon's time is four hours, so our target is to make it a minimum four hours continuous use, but uh, they only run for one hour. So uh, I'm sure this is too short to run the full marathon. So we try to look what are the issues. And it seems that the memory use were making a monotonic increment. If we draw a line here, the, run, the red is showing the M Ruby, and as the time passes, it's increasing, as we see here. So in order to solve this issue, what we did was we, since the issue is that the memory is increasing by the time, so we looked at the part where is the infinite loop is happening. So we tried to find out what are the causes here. So for example, we turn the data transmission process using HTTPS into a comment, and then we run for quite a long time and see whether the memory amount will increase or not. Then 
this is what we have. It seems that they're not using up the memories. And those that are not in the comment, uh, we can see that there is no uh, simple incrementation. So we tried to find out what was the cause. The M Ruby gems that we are using, unfortunately, we could not find the cause and we could not solve the issue. I'm sorry for that. I thought this is maybe the SSL, but we're not sure yet. So since we could not identify the cause, we have come up with a different idea on the solution. One was to stop the infinite loop with the MRuby application. So this part that is circled, if we expand it, this is what we see. Uh, the C, the rules of memory is still lower than C Ruby. That's what we got. And I'm not sure if somebody's here, Mr. Tanaka, who is mainly working for the M Ruby, and the talk he, Mr. Uh, Tanaka, in the Tokyo Ruby Conference 11, he talked about the M Ruby's application startup is much earlier than the C Ruby application, so we utilize that. So the actual process that we are transmitting the for the MRuby process, we stopped it to be only once. And for the infinite loop, we decided to do it in the shell. So the loop process and the three sleep shells uh, will be implemented by shell. And then the OS use of the memory, as we see here is a red line. It is increasing normally, but what we, based on the measures that we have taken, it is now staying flat. So for the future uh, issues and putting together what we have done, in the presentation that we are doing this time, uh, we introduced the MRuby applications activity at the OSS promotion forum and also introduce how we make the MRuby application and also how to look for the MRB gems and also how to select them. And the issue that there is a monotonic incrementation of the memory use, we could not find the root cause and the solutions, but we could find out the way to solve that by utilizing the characteristics of MRuby. And maybe you have forgotten that the GPS data's accuracy was the issue. You might say you should buy a nice hardware. Maybe that will solve the issue. But uh, here, with uh, the results that I run today, I made a running in the Matsue. So I took the data today. So if there are any requests in the question answer, I can show you the data that I took by running today around the Matsue city. This is what uh, the mobile phone is doing. Not only the GPS, maybe it is not possible to make it accuracy, so you should use a Wi-Fi data in parallel and also make the adjustment of the location. And the amount of memories, incrementations, I would like to look for the solution for that. Uh, we need a lots of knowledge, so I just listed some of the reference information, so we would like to refer to this information to solve the issue. And for the future, once we ha will solve these problems, we would also like to challenge using them in a smaller instrument. At this point of time, so four hours operation is not possible because the Raspberry itself consumes a lot. So the best will be three hours and a half. And only with three hours and a half, maybe I can run much faster to fulfill that. So I will try hard. But also, we should try hard to reduce the amount of electricity to use the that the hardware use. I'm glad that everybody's laughing. And so with a very small type of uh, modules, Micron, then the MRuby will not run. So with the MRuby slash C, which is now under development, this is uh, one idea to be used. And also for the communication protocol, I use the HTTPS this time, but there is another uh, protocol, which is MQTT, which is much lighter. 
and also it is say that is uh, effective in reducing the amount of power consumption. So I would also like to consider about that. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Miyoshi and Mr. Hara. Then, uh, anybody has any questions? I would be uh, have time to answer the questions. Uh, yes, you are raising your hand, so I will carry the microphone to you. Now I like to have a look at the data, the latest one. Thank you for asking. Does it work? As time goes by, we are more and more looking forward to, to seeing the data. How long distance did you learn? This morning, starting in early morning, uh, silly, it doesn't show up. Uh, I started at 7. It was very windy. And started to rain eventually. So it was not a good environment. But through wind and through rain, you learn, right? Yes, <laughs> I worked very hard. It's like a very diligent Japanese. Like Kenji Miyazawa, he is well-known, diligent Japanese. Oh, he did, couldn't remember his name, Kenji Miyazawa. Okay, here it goes. On Azure, web application is on Azure. This is not a maniac, but don't pay close attention about how it works. When I run, small GPS watch is used to get the accurate location and the time. At the top, and uh, this is actual data from this morning at seven, one minute past one, seven. And if I click, this is uh, my jogging in this morning starting from the hotel. Sorry, it's not very quick. Please wait. Sally, move it to a different page. And here is the result of the measurement from our device, not the GPS watch. So here is a question to you. Can you guess where it is? So this is the actual data from our device in a wider map. <laughs> it's very wide. As you can see, where it is. This is Matsue, this is the Lake Shinji. I didn't run over a lake, however, it's min in the middle of mountain. And uh, that's not Matsue, but uh, in the mountain. So it's not so funny, isn't it? Okay, so this is the actual course I run. It's about six kilometers. I just finished the full marathon recently, so my pace this morning was not so fast. That's it. Thank you very much for sharing the data. Thank you very much. 
Any other question from the floor? If not, as he said, uh, he runs marathon. Have you ever joined the Shimane marathon competition? Uh, I've heard that there is a half marathon competition in Yasugi. I was thinking about joining sometime, but this time I couldn't, unfortunately. But sometime in the future, like next year, if possible, I'd like to join. We have some more other marathon competition, like uh, Ebisu Daikoku Marathon. The name is very good. It's like uh, the, we have the shrine called Miho Jinjer, and also Izumo Shrine is famous for the god of Daikoku. And t in between two shrines, it's about 100 kilometers. So it's 100 kilometer marathon. I encourage you to join and share the result in the next conference. It's frozen now. Uh, OK, let me think about that. Thank you very much. Mr. Miyoshi, Mr. Hara, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation.